DOJ Prosecutor Jack Smith is building this case against Trump, who goes on trial in March. That's the biggest and first case Trump faces. And we're now getting an account of what his vice president told the DOJ. Pence reportedly telling investigators how he clearly and repeatedly emphasized to Trump that rejecting the votes on January 6th, of course, would violate the Constitution, and that he told prosecutors he's sure he told Trump there was no evidence of fraud. Here's what Pence has said publicly. The president's words that day at the rally endangered me and my family and everyone at the Capitol building. It doesn't take courage to break the law. It takes courage to uphold the law. I mean, the president's words were reckless. It was clear he decided to be part of the problem. Part of the problem is putting it mildly, considering that Donald Trump fanned the flames as Mike Pence was literally targeted for assassination. A gallows was hung up on Jan 6th. And what's striking here is that old footage we just showed you, of course, was in a different political chapter. Pence was still running for president. Now he has quit, which means he's no longer politically trying to somehow hold open a door to Republican faithful or MAGA. Also, we learned, according to this report, that before January 6th, Pence had considered and even momentarily decided he would just skip the Jan 6th certification, according to this ABC report. And there were too many questions, and it would be too hurtful to Trump. Quote, therefore, I'm not going to participate in certification of election is at least what was the plan in that draft. We know, of course, Pence ultimately did participate. Now, Trump and his allies had a multi-pronged conspiracy to overturn the results. We've shown you those arrows. Jack Smith has now indicted five of them, and one of them was the effort to try to get Pence to illegally, and as he put it, unconstitutionally, steal the results somehow that day. Now, that could have been unprecedented. Instead, we got a different unprecedented situation, the insurrection, which saw Pence fleeing from the mob. Jack Smith's team also pressing Pence on, well, what he put in that now infamous book. For example, the phone call they had on Christmas. In the book, Pence wrote, you know, Trump said, I don't think I have, uh, sorry, that uh, Pence told Trump, I should say, I don't have the authority. Pence told Smith's investigators he meant to write the sentence without a comma and admonished Trump by saying, you know, comma, I don't think I have the authority. Um, but what do you see in that report? I think he's going to be a star witness for the prosecution. He is in the room with Trump saying, I told him I thought these lawyers were crank lawyers. I told him that I didn't see any evidence of election fraud. I told him that it would be un-American for me to not show up and certify the count. I mean, those are, those are really damning statements that he can say he told Donald Trump personally. And, you know, Donald Trump's tr strategy, according to a filing yesterday, his team is trying to discredit Mike Pence by saying that he's biased against Trump uh, because he was trying to get out of the mishandling of classified information investigation, uh, which really just seems ludicrous. They found one document in his house. It was a consensual search. So I don't really... Th it seems kind of a desperate strategy. To is it progress him. that they're trying to verbally discredit him rather than having other people kill him? <laughs> I, I don't know that it's progress at all. I think all of it will fail. I mean, I, I don't think anybody is going to believe that Mike Pence was biased against Trump. He seems pretty loyal to him, almost like a George McFly to his Biff Tannen. <laughs> like, but at the end, you know, what, what, is, uh, what does George McFly do? He strikes the knockout punch, and that's what I think will happen at this trial. I think he's going to be a very credible witness because he was loyal. And he didn't have any reason to go against Trump here. He had every reason to try and stay in office, but he did the right thing in the end. Hugo, I'm sure you appreciate the time machine references from Back to the Future. I don't know if it might be slightly before your time. It's possible. Which, Over your head. Uh, yeah. Over your head. Sorry. Um, we appreciate the honesty. Well, <laughs> I was Rick and Morty. Are you familiar with that? Uh, yeah, yeah. That is a fictional universe that that grew out of the Back to the Future universe. Well, well, there you go. So I mean, yeah. you know, and imagine if you have a time machine, which they did have, you can use it for for good or evil, as we learned in those in the trilogy. Uh, not to digress too much, I just I'm not going to put you on the spot if you don't know that particular film. But when you see this part about oh. Um, Pence might have skipped the whole thing. Um, because it's a what if and didn't happen, I don't know how much criminal liability is there, but I thought it was interesting that it came up, and as someone who's covered this very closely, and we showed our arrows, we've kept an eye on it as well. Um, what, do you, what do you read into that, that, that the pressure campaign built to the point and the political cost was going to be such that at least 
Mike Pence, at one point in time, was writing down his excuse for uh, skipping his biggest assignment of the year. I think it kind of shows a, a kind of a window into the real high-pressure situation that Pencils in at the time, and how seriously I think there was a discussion and clearly some kind of steps towards having not, you know, Pence be there on January 6th and for that to either be a contingent election or to have these fake slates go, have Chuck Grassley preside. I mean, for a long time, we didn't know if this was even something that was. Uh, you know, formally or credibly discussed. But if you look at Pence's notes and Pence is saying, well, you know, at this rate, I'm not going to preside on January 6th. And he was only talked out of it by his 20-year-old son. I thought that was extremely significant. Because the, the obvious implication is he skips so they can put in a thug. You know, we talk in Godfather, I want a wartime consigliere. They want a thug. Mike Pence, who'd been loyal to Donald Trump about everything, as we learned in the com committee hearings and everything else, looked at this and said, he's super politically loyal, but he won't, he won't do a coup. And so the idea was he would step out not to have someone else do what he did, but that they would put in a fixer who would be a thug who would help with a coup, yes? Who would do what Trump wanted to do, because Pence would not do him this final favor, which was to either throw things to the House of Representatives. This was something that came up in discussions with Steve Bannon and, uh, you know, uh, some of the other people on the fringes who are more interested in that kind of strategy. Or even if you were to have it as, you know, John Eastman wanted on January 6th, which was to, you know, have some sort of, we don't know what is going on. Maybe we will not count certain slates. We might count others. Pencil's not willing to go with any yeah. of that. And, and that really goes to where I think there is a challenge for Jack Smith, Christy, between all of the bananas, circus stuff, and what it was in service of. So Donald Trump has talked brazy. Do you know that term, wild or brazy? <laughs> He's been brazy about many topics, not always important ones. This was important. The committee I want to show looked at all the ways he was attacking Pence, and it's easily it's easy possible to just start feeling like this is a Beltway coup edition of Real Housewives with all these people who deserve each other fighting and calling each other names. But underneath that was something important. Um, so I want your reaction to how do you take this to a jury and make it matter? Let's look at that sound. I remember hearing the word wimp. Either he called him a wimp. I don't remember if he said, you are a wimp, you'll be a wimp. Wimp is the word I remember. It was a different tone than I'd heard him take um, with the vice president before. Do you remember? Remember what she said? Her father called him the P word. So that plays one way, and we can discuss that and the misogyny of it and plays on the Internet. But this isn't a discussion about what's proper speech, right? This is about whether the pressure campaign against Pence, all those things combined with the public pressure to make this a political litmus test, was in service of the coup. Do you, how do you explain that to a jury and not, the, and not have them get lost in the drama of it? Well, again, I think you need credible witnesses to really tell that story, to play out what was this campaign, what was the pressure campaign, what were the things that were being said, and what was the effect on Mike Pence? I mean, again, you know, as Hugo mentioned, there's this conversation that Pence really is having with his son, who's a Marine, and says, well, we, we both took the same oath, so you to uphold the Constitution, so you have to show up. I mean, that's going to play very well to a jury, this kind of tortured soul trying to figure out what to do when he's got this pressure campaign on him. What is the right thing to do? He's got his notes saying he's thinking about not doing, but ultimately but, but let me jump he in. shows up. If I'm, if I'm a defense lawyer for Trump, and you're saying that, I'm going to be telling the jury, this isn't about whether Mike Pence is a hero. Call him a hero if you want. The thing you say is so bad didn't really happen, Right. He's not on trial for storming the Capitol, the insurrection. The coup part didn't happen. So how, how do you land that? Because you can get up in closing defense arguments and tell the jury, great, we heard a lot about all these great people who stood up. Fine, they stood up. No coup here. They didn't pull it off. No crime here. They didn't pull it off, but the issue is what was their intent? Mm -hmm. Their intent was clearly to try and pull it off, and they did so many different things to try to pull it off, one of which being the pressure campaign against Mike Pence to try to get him to not show up, put in a thug, and have them not certify the count. So I think it's it's a multi-pronged strategy for, uh, for Jack Smith to really show all the different ways 
that Trump intended. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have to have pulled it off to be guilty. It's a conspiracy. All he has to do is agree with others to break the law yeah. and take acts in furtherance of that, even if they didn't actually execute the crime itself. So yeah. I, I think that story is going to really be told through a lot of these witnesses. And yeah, it, it's got that housewives element to it. But you know what? That'll keep the jury's attention. Yeah. It's, it's going to be riveting.